twice in a row. I can't believe it, but they've done it. In an industry where incremental updates are the new norm, Huawei manages to wow us again, barely a year after we were wowed by the P20 Pro. And it's this phone here that I'm excited about. And now that it's official, we're working on a full review. But in the meantime, care for an introduction? Hello from London, I'm Michael Josh, you're watching Gadget Match, and this is our Huawei Mate 20 and Mate 20 Pro hands-on. Here you go, this is the Mate 20. Taking cues from the P20, it too is available in a Northern Lights inspired gradient finish. An explosion of colors, not your cup of tea? There's midnight blue and emerald green. These ones have a special coating on them that make them less slippery and more smudge resistant. No matter which color you choose, each phone's power button is given a red accent, which I think is a very nice small touch. Huawei says it's designed these phones to be iconic, the kind that if you see someone using out in public, you can say, hey, that's a Mate 20. So instead of having branding and camera elements arranged horizontally, like on the photography specific P20, the Mate 20's cameras are assigned like this on the back of the phone. It's bold and in your face and looks nothing like its predecessor. And you'll either love it or hate it, but it does look different and we appreciate the intention to set itself apart design-wise. None of these changes affect the phone's water and dust resistance ratings in case of rain, spills, or if you need a quick rinse. You are unfortunately not getting a headphone jack, but the hybrid SIM card tray supports either two nano SIM cards or swap one out for what Huawei is calling a nano memory card, which appears to be its own proprietary storage solution. The Mate 20 is available in two models. Here's the standard Mate 20, and here's the Mate 20 Pro. This Pro model is the one that's got us all excited, but let me break down the differences between these two variants. Here, take a look at the display on both phones. The Pro model has a large notch where it stores its Apple Face ID like depth sensor and face unlock system, while the Mate 20 has a dewdrop shaped notch that's just enough to wrap around the single selfie camera up front. The display on the Mate 20 Pro is curved on both sides, similar to what Samsung's been doing on its high-end Galaxy phones, while the Mate 20 has a more traditional flat display. On paper, these displays are very different also. Hidden underneath the display of the Mate 20 Pro is a fingerprint scanner, which Huawei says is based on new tech that's faster than what we've seen previously from them. You just press and hold to unlock. Both phones are powered by Huawei's new Kirin 980 processor. The Mate 20 Pro supports fast wireless charging, which Huawei claims is 200% faster than on the iPhone 10. The Mate 20 Pro has a larger battery, comes bundled with a faster 40 watt fast supercharged charger that can go from zero to 70% in 30 minutes, and it can do this. Wait. What? The feature is called wireless reverse charging, and it supports any device with the Qi standard, including the iPhone. Just turn the feature on and the back of the Mate 20 Pro becomes a wireless charger. If you live a two phone life like I do, then I can imagine carrying the phones one on top of the other, the phone with the not so good battery charging on top of the Mate 20 Pro. While we're on the subject of charging, the USB-C port on the Pro model also doubles as speakers. See here? You don't get the usual speaker grills at the bottom. Instead, sound comes out from the single port alone. Earlier this year, Huawei made waves when it launched the P20 Pro, still the highest rated camera on DxO Mark. Although that might change on the Mate 20 Pro. Apart from expected improvements, Huawei is also doing some things differently. You no longer get a dedicated monochrome camera, which I never really thought served its purpose, making that big of a contribution to photo quality anyway. In case you want to take black and white photos, you can still do so via one of the modes on the camera app. Instead, apart from its 40 megapixel standard lens and its three times zoom lens, you get, wait for it, an ultra wide angle lens. LG just did it on the V40 ThingQ and I'm thrilled to see it on the Mate 20 Pro also. The same ultra wide angle lens is responsible for taking super macro images. When you get up close to a subject, the camera will lock into place to take sharp close-up shots. To switch between them, you tap here, 0.6x, 1x, and 3x. A few software tricks have also been added, like bokeh lighting. And as the name suggests, you can change the blurred lights in the background into different shapes, including hearts. 
Of course, these cameras will all be backed up by Huawei's master AI tech, and the company says it's been improved. I'm not really that big of an AI photography fan, at least where Huawei is concerned. Uh, the P20 Pro already shot great photos without it, but I'm willing to give it a try and see if things have improved. You can now disable it completely by diving into settings and flicking a switch, but there's no way to undo a change after taking a shot like we saw on the Honor 10 or Huawei's own Nova 3 which I would have loved better. That way I can keep AI on and then just undo it if I didn't like AI's choices. Where I think AI would come in real handy is a feature called 4D Predictive Focus, which harnesses the power of the new Kirin 980 chip and the dual NPU. So that if, for example, you're shooting a video of my friend David, even if he moves around a bit, the camera will know exactly to keep focusing on him even if other subjects come into frame. Now that the phone's official, we can't wait to take the Mate 20 Pro out and about in the real world to see how well its camera really performs. But in the meantime, take a look at some sample shots we shot around London and Singapore. On the Mate 20 Pro, you get a full-size notch that houses a 3D depth sensing camera. Before you say anything, don't worry, you can hide the big notch if you don't like it. This notch setup makes face unlock faster and importantly, more secure. If you want it even faster, switch to direct unlock in the settings so you don't have to swipe up every time. Selfie portraits are also supposed to have more accurate cutouts and more realistic background blur, although our initial samples tell a different story. The non-pro model doesn't have the same face unlocking system, but face unlock still works. There's so much more worth covering, like how desktop mode doesn't need a cable anymore. Improvements to EMUI that, among other things, make it easier to find exactly what you need from the settings menu and the digital balance features that come with Android Pie. We'll deep dive in our review. Of course, there are many other things that we can't wait to test out, like how powerful is the new Kirin 980 processor? Huawei is promising a 20% improvement in speed and 40% improvement in power efficiency. Will the phone take any task we throw at it? And will its battery last even longer? And with the new GPU Turbo version 2 on EMUI 9, are your favorite games going to run smoother? And are the Huawei Mate 20 and Mate 20 Pro your gadget match? We'll answer all those questions in our review video, but as it stands, the Huawei Mate 20 Pro might just be the best phone we've seen so far this year. Pricing, of course, will be a big factor that we have yet to consider. And as we are shooting this video pre-launch, we don't have that information just yet, but as soon as we get it, we'll add it to the description below. In the meantime, sit tight. October is a busy month and we have many more phone launches to cover, more phones to review and unbox, and we are only just getting started. So to make sure you don't miss any of that awesome content, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we post a new video, follow us on social media, and make GadgetMash.com your daily habit. From here in London, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.